good evening to some of my viewers. If you're watching this, this clearly piques some interest, and maybe some of you might can might relate. But um, you know, when I was younger, I definitely played a lot of pranks, uh, especially with friends. Didn't do a lot of them by myself unless they were kind of small and harmless, and they would usually happen at school. Um, but this is a time where um, we may have done a prank that may have pushed the limits just a little too far. And I'm going to tell you about it. Um, so, by all means, if you can relate, you know, comment something. Or if you've done something where maybe a prank or a joke went just a little too far and, and things started to get a little too serious, um, by all means, uh, mention it. Um, so, this all kind of starts in the dead of winter. I'm going to say it was mid-January. And uh, this was just before uh, going back to school. And now I live in the Northeast, um, which is very typical to get like heavy snowfall. And, you know, I went to, I went to a friend's house, you know, just to kind of play around either on video games or sometimes we'd go outside and go sledding or throw snowballs or do all that kind of, you know, crazy stuff you do when you're got about a foot of snow outside your house. But anyways, so this all starts off on a weekend night. We decided to all spend the time together kind of just playing games on the Xbox. And uh, now I'm not much of a uh, game player, but I'm the kind of person that doesn't mind to watch. I actually prefer watching as opposed to playing because I'm quite horrible with uh, the coordination of a controller. So watching someone else do a crap ton better than I could ever was more entertaining for me than getting frustrated with figuring out what keys and what buttons uh, control what actions on the uh, game player. Um, but um, we're all hanging out here having a little bit of hot cocoa and it starts to get a little bit later in the day after playing for about an hour or two and one of my friends, let's just call him Carlos, and my other friend, who we're going to call Matt for the sake of the story, um, we all decide to go out, and even though it's getting a little darker out, we decide we'd like to go out and just take a walk around the neighborhood, maybe throw some snowballs, maybe, you know, see what else there is to do. Um, none of us had sleds at the time, at least not ones that were in good enough shape to actually ride, because majority of our sleds were torn up or had simply been stolen. Um, in my neighborhood, this was a common occurrence where other kids would steal the sleds off of other people's patios to go sledding and then take them away off to wherever they're sledding and leave them there. And oftentimes they would not be found because they would be buried in snow or would end up somewhere in the woods where you could not go back there to get them. Um, but anyways, we decided to go around to go for a walk and meanwhile there's not much snow coming down at this point so we're just kind of chilling around throwing some snowballs uh running through the backyards of other people's houses um jumping onto other people's forts that they've made you know like snow igloos or little uh little snow walls for snow fights and stuff like that kind of just running amok and, and making a mess of things but um anyways we managed to get in contact with uh, another one of our friends who's lives kind of close knit in the neighborhood that we were playing in at the time and we decided to go and hop on over to their place to give them give them a little bit of a shout out to and uh hang out with them for a little bit but uh instead of going to their place we ended up leaving from their place or their uh, front door and going over to this other neighbor who was another kid who lived by but was not very well known for uh the um best of things got into quite a bit of trouble did some stuff that uh, other people would probably find appalling and uh the kid's brother was an absolute drug addict um i'm just gonna jump forward and tell you that because there's nothing else i can say about that he, he wasn't really much of a troublemaker he wasn't really much of anything he just did a lot of drugs um popping pills mostly over-the-counter prescription medic medicine stuff like that um very much well into his high school years and um but his brother was was for the most part uh, a pretty nice guy uh really nice to us anyways and um 
they they oftentimes played a lot of pranks and some of the pranks would be a little bit too far like uh, as I, if i can give you an example of uh, they would order pizzas um and get the pizzas never tip the delivery driver um which by the way it isn't illegal but is quite heavily rude and um <clears throat> they would do this thing where they'd eat the entire pizza call the pizza place back tell them that it didn't um get sent right or there was something wrong with it and have them re-deliver another pizza um, completely free of charge and uh, usually as you can imagine sent by the exact same person who sent us the first one and um, they would do this and this was before the time where you know oh, if you call them back you have to give them back the other pizza so they can refund it but uh, no in this case we we didn't do that and uh, it wasn't mandatory um, but things like that they would just continuously keep ordering pizzas and and saying that the first pizza they got was incorrect or wasn't done right or it was completely messed up and uh, i believe uh, one of the ki one of the kids that was my friend uh, said well you know if they need proof just take a picture of it all messed up and then um simply show it to the guy when he gets there and then instead of showing them the pizza just tell him oh yeah we threw it out um because it was so messed up in reality we just ate it all as quickly as possible before they got back um, and this was not one of those uh, exceptions. That actually did happen this night as well. But after we had munched down on two pies of pizza, which, by the way, was a little more than enough because it was only shared between the four of us, um, we decided to go out and uh, decide to walk out in the snow as it started to come down a little bit harder, walk out to the ends of the neighborhoods. Uh, we lived in kind of like a cul-de-sac, but it was just a long street that looped back around out to the main street from both ends so on either side you could go back out onto the main street and we decided to walk out one of the ends and uh, meanwhile we're walking we're making a little bit of noise we're kind of throwing snowballs around and you know being a little bit loud uh the one kid whose brother was notorious for doing all different kinds of pill popping decides that he gets the bright idea to go up and ding dong ditch random people's houses um and we live where there's a lot of townhouses so there's one door next to another next to another for a row of eight or ten and we just go up from one to the other to the other to the other and basically ding dong ditch all of the houses in this one building and do the same thing with some of the other houses on the other side and uh we do this for a bit run and hide and and, and white watch to see if anyone will come out and uh usually it would just result in someone opening the door looking outside well, looking around for a bit seeing if there's anyone even there and then they'll just go back inside and lock the doors but um that was only fun for a little while until uh i'm gonna call the kid with the br oddly weird brother um we're gonna call him michael and he got the idea to step it up a notch and to start knocking on the door and making um verbal threats through the door or even the just through the windows and stuff like that and try to get people's attention in that sense which in my opinion wasn't the smartest way to go about it but we did initially end up um, running away multiple times as people came out yelling you know whoever's out there I'm gonna mess you up or uh, you know if you don't stop messing around I'm gonna call the police and oftentimes I think they knew it was probably kids or at least they knew it must have been because we didn't have voices that sounded deep enough to be grown adults so we kind of were just running around aimlessly like chickens with their heads cut off and uh, that's that's kind of what we did for majority of the time we only did that to a couple of houses and once or twice i even did it with trying the impression of being the police or trying the, the impression that i am a overly concerned neighbor and um, or my kid is uh, very sick and we need medical attention but then I'd run away before anyone could even get to the door and answer it and this is just something that would go on over and over back and forth after a while we just kept walking down to the ends of the neighborhood we kept walking down the boulevard as far as we could until we were too cold and too tired to keep on going and this, as the snow got deeper we decided to walk our way back and uh let's say three of the eventually became six of us because two others joined in midway you know um three of us decided to 
continue going in a different direction down a different neighborhood any other three that i was with we we wanted to go home because we were getting tired and it was getting late and our parents were pretty sure that we would be coming back around that time anyways so instead of pushing the envelope we decided to come back and um as we're trudging our way back through uh, you see this is where it gets interesting um we're walking down and we see flashlights out of the distance in the same neighborhood we just came out of that's our neighborhood and just flashing down the street looking both ways and uh, don't think much of it because a lot of people who live in these areas have animals they have dogs they have to walk and occasionally when it gets this dark out they'll usually go out with flashlights especially during a snowstorm and uh, so we don't think much of it but we walk up a little closer and certainly we can hear voices coming from the sources of light um, screaming you know hey you out there i can see you don't try to run and hide and we get the impression that oh these must be some of the people we might have pissed off from earlier and uh, even though we weren't the ones that were knocking on the doors consistently through all throughout the neighborhood we were definitely part of that gang that was running and hiding and you know throwing snowballs and crap like that and hitting windows and all that fun stuff so they eventually walk their way out to us and grab us both by the shoulders and uh, another angry parent or so is not far behind and says hey did you find the people who who've been not banging on the doors and causing chaos and of course they said yeah i think these are the kids right here and, and we try to plead with them telling them no no no, no we're, we're not them we were out also looking for them which was a complete lie but it, it wasn't enough to make them believe it so anyways they ended up thinking we were the ones doing it just by ourselves and now carlos who was there um with us also trying to go home he he flees he 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 knows what's going on right off the bat and before they even come to get us he's basically back down the other end of the street and trying to find a different way through the woods to get back to his place which isn't too hard the woods isn't as dense and you can definitely walk through it uh, especially with just some snow boots and a jacket you'll definitely be just fine but he's gone at this point so it's just me and the other kid who joined later in the in the group and uh, we're both looking at each other like crap they're definitely not going to let us out and uh, we're definitely going to get in trouble and our parents are definitely going to get told about this but um we end up pleading and telling them look uh it wasn't us doing it it was somebody else it was our friend uh michael who that's who he said it was and we said that it was only him and that uh, we could show them where he lived and that they can go to his parents but we were only just hang we were only just trying to have fun um, either way i managed to walk down the street and once they all let us kind of go and, and walk down with them we tell them we can show them where they are and we can show you where they live and everything and we walk down with everybody uh the other couple of parents who also want to confront the parents of whoever this kid is um and after a bit i pass by my block and i start to swerve a little bit off to the side to kind of move away from the group as i was already somewhat towards the back since everyone else was following my other friend all the way to his house because he lives next door to him i uh, i tell him uh hey i'm gonna head home but just take him to his house so they know where he's at and then as the other parents look at us look at me they uh they assume that i must have had something to do with it and that's why i'm trying to flee but before any of them can really say anything i take off behind a couple of cars and get into the house not far from where we were standing at the time i managed to slip into the door get inside it closed the door and lock it behind me and thankfully no one followed me back and knocked on the door to tell me or tell my mother anything since it was just me and her there um so i was able to get away with that unfortunately my other friend had to walk them not only to michael's house but they also ended up going to knock on his parents house as well and yeah, needless to say he got grounded for a couple of days and uh, i don't exactly know what ended up happening with michael but i know that uh it didn't seem like any consequences arose from his family he was still up and at it doing the same thing about a week later and uh, again probably causing the same havoc only this time i wasn't there to witness it and i chose not to be part of it that day um but my 
friend who was helping me, who was with me towards the end and was walking with me when we all got busted, um, definitely, definitely got some repercussions for that one, including shoveling cars and doing other things for neighbors. Uh, I believe the same said neighbors who uh, Mike had ding-dong ditched and made threats to and thrown snowballs at their windows and all this stuff. Um, but this was supposedly... Uh, or supposed to be a prank that was supposed to be harmless and ended up getting us both in a lot of trouble uh, Not so much me, but it definitely got some of the other kids in trouble I know that for a fact that when the rest of them got home They weren't in trouble for the whole thing on ditching But they were in trouble because they didn't come home when their parents told them to come home and matter of fact They didn't show up for another hour and a half and uh, it made their parents all very worried and got them all grounded um, the only one who didn't suffer uh, repercussions too much, I believe, was Carlos. And I saw him the next day, and I asked him what happened, and he said he got home safely, and yeah, no one followed him, and no one saw him. So he was the only one who escaped, and uh, as for Michael, well, about less than a year later, them and their whole family moved out from our area down to Florida, and they were not uh, seen or heard from too, too much, although I do believe he's still living around locally now though uh, i think they might have came back or i think maybe just he did um but either way this was just an interesting story time i thought i'd share and uh i know maybe a little bit of confusing you'll have to pardon me but this is one of the first times i've decided to put together a story time about a certain situation like this it's sometimes hard to recall all this information but i do remember the key parts like uh, usually the parts where you get in trouble and your parents uh, get quite pissed with you and um, other things like that but yeah i hope you've enjoyed this and i hope to tell a couple more later maybe i can format them a little bit better or maybe i'll write some sort of script structure so i don't seem like i'm all over the place with them uh, thank you very much, and I hope you have a great day.